I gotta say, it feels pretty good to be back. <clears throat> I miss this place a lot. Um, you know, when I'm not here, I certainly miss it. It was good to be back. And for tonight's entree, <laughs> we're having a chicken and mashed potatoes. So we'll give that a bash. I think uh, the objective on this trip right here, the objective is to um, get the ROV and hopefully I'd like to film two submerged uh, lava domes that I've located in the past. Um, I'd like to kind of get a better view on them and uh, see, see what I can see. Because one thing I've noticed is that uh, the views underwater are substantially different uh, with the ROV than they are with my drag cameras. I mean, yeah, they kind of look the same in a sense, but the ROV just allows you to get closer and stay on target and look at what you want to look at. So I don't know, maybe it's just the dynamic is different, but uh, either way, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Weather's supposed to be not too bad. Uh, which way are the clouds going? Hopefully they're going that way. There's a big dark one over there. And they are, they're going that way. Anyway, just gonna set up and kind of relax at camp tonight and um, just relax. You know, I got up this morning, oh, dark 30, went to work and uh, worked my day at work and then uh, headed on out here. It's a pretty good drive. Traffic was horrible. God, it took me like three, a little, about three hours to get here, so. It is what it is. Anywho, I think I'll I think I'll have my dinner and um, just enjoy the peace. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just can't get enough of this. It's just I don't know. I guess uh, I guess you have to really be into it or something. I don't know. I shouldn't even bother to try to explain it. It is what it is. Well, uh, one interesting thing about the Garmin inReach is that it can give you live updates on weather. <laughs> and uh, earlier this afternoon when I checked the weather, everything looked good up in this area. However, with that said, I decided, eh, let me just check out the weather here at the uh, site where my current location is. And uh, yeah. It's looking like uh, starting at about midnight, 30% chance of rain, and then 40% chance of rain. And then at two in the afternoon, it goes to zero. And then somewhere between two and four, we'll say three o'clock maybe, three, I don't know, somewhere. And at four o'clock, it's back to 30%. So, and then Sunday, it's showing all rain. So, yeah. 0.16 inch of rain is what they're talking about. So I drove all the way down here. Um, I'm here now, so I'm gonna stick it out. I don't know. I don't know that I'm gonna actually be able to film. Do you know? Because so with the ROV, in order for me to get to where I need to go, I've got to you know go to the lake, and then um, I've got to hike. Uh, put the ROV in the backpack and hike across the, you know, down the trails, lava field and stuff like that to get to where I need to launch from. So, and honestly, I don't want to be out on the water in the rain because that kind of sucks. So I think the order of business right now is to um, keep everything packed up that I don't need just kind of sitting out. Keep everything packed up and then um, 
That way, if I got a cut and run, it just if it just totally goes to yuck, then I can. However, with that said, let's just see where this goes because I'm here now. So, one other guy pulled in down here, really nice uh, Tacoma. He's got some kind of camp and get up on that thing. Looks like a rooftop tent with a little camper thing underneath it, maybe. I don't know. Really cool looking set. I've got propane bottles and stuff. The guy's obviously a much more pro than I am. <laughs> uh, I can't complain though. I love my little setup. This cross trek wilderness is awesome. And uh, I'm not like focused on the camping thing. Uh, my big thing is to be able to get to a location to do filming and do what I like to do and then have kind of a base station where I can cook something to eat and sleep. That's kind of my big focus. Um, I will say this much though, I'm starting to like camping a little bit. It's not that I hated it, but I kind of sucked in the military. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll just take it as it is. All right, man, we'll check back after a while. So this is called Fish Lake. This is pretty near Clear Lake. This one was formed by Nash Crater. And uh, it's kind of a seasonal lake. Uh, it has a tendency to virtually dry out. Uh, if you look out there straight ahead, you can see a tree that's like literally growing out of the water because it's not totally submerged uh, all the time. See if I can zoom in a little bit here. So this lake goes, uh, goes out and around that way for quite an extended period of time. Uh, it's a fairly good sized lake, uh, a lot of, lot of lava here, uh, as can be seen in quite a few of these. Beautiful place, unfortunately the weather's not uh, being very friendly today. So this is one of the hiking trails over here at uh, Fish Lake. And uh, we'll just check this side out. Now Fish Lake will be on your right side as you're heading from Sisters or somewhere like that before Clear Lake. Um, haven't really done any filming here before. But uh, you can see the lava here uh, from the uh, from uh, Nash Crater. Uh, sure dumped a lot in here. From the air, this area looks really interesting, and you can see an immense lava flow coming in towards this area. So we kind of round the bend out of here and you can see 
the lake from the trailhead here. And my guess is that this trail here probably just circumnavigates uh, the lake. That'd be my guess, but I can't say with certainty as I've never done it. And given the weather today, I probably won't be doing it today either. <laughs> but this does look like a good open place to be able to launch a drone from in a different day. Should I uh, choose to come over here and film this area a little bit better? If there's interest in, you know, in me uh, filming this area uh, or even this trail, uh, just let me know. Post it in the comments, do whatever. And it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem because I'm usually in this area. So no biggie. So I'm not exactly sure what I ran into here. Well, this is kind of interesting. This must be the little town I talked about. So this place appears to be open to the public as an interpretive center. It's a little odd because <laughs> it almost feels like you're walking to someone's, someone's property, but because um, I mean, there's like buildings and fences and you know stuff around. Pretty cool looking place though. Looks like there's a road that goes way up who knows where over that way. Up into the trees way out there. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but it goes way up into those trees over there. And honestly, I couldn't tell you Honestly, we're like the cabins that are up on this little hilltop over there. I, I don't know if that's part of the interpretive center or if people actually live there. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Fish Lake Remount Depot. Let's see what the sign says. Since we're here. Fish Lake for many years was an important way stop on the old Willamette Valley Cascade Mountain Road, commonly called the Santiam Wagon Road. Boy, don't I know that one. <laughs> Photos taken in 1892 show people with wagons camping by Fish Lake. A hotel, saloon, and other buildings to accommodate travelers once stood here. The Forest Service established the Fish Lake, Fish Lake Remount Station as a base for pack and saddle stock in its early years. After 1910, the station was sometimes used as the summer headquarters of the old Santiam National Forest. In 
A pioneer grave and some of the original buildings are still preserved just north of this point. Please help preserve these relics. That must be those up there. Huh. Fascinating. I'm going to guess that's a foundation to a old house or something right there. Look at this. Oh, wow. That's cool. First I thought it was a wagon, but clearly it's not. It's got a chain drive of something. Oh, look at that. For my Ford people. Let's check that out. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> well, at least it doesn't have an EcoBoost in it. So I ended up kind of hiking, walking the trail, whatever, uh, to the other side of the lake, just because I could. And uh, it's actually pretty good sized. I have no idea how deep it is, but I'm gonna guess since it's fairly seasonal, uh, this lake here is probably very, very shallow. The sun looks beautiful over there. Got a little bit of blue sky above us temporarily. It's like the first blue sky I've seen for a while. That's good. So on the way back, I thought I'd stop up here at uh, Belknap Crater, have a look-see, and do a little time lapse. So I'll put that in right here. Today may have been a wash for the ROV due to the weather. Uh, not that the ROV minds the weather, but uh, sunlight down in the water will, will definitely affect imagery. Um, it, uh, it doesn't seem to matter what I do here, even though the weather's really cold right now and raining. Uh, ironically, the weather report said rain at midnight and at 12.15, there it was. Pretty much rained pretty much all through the night and it's been raining uh, pretty much the whole time, light sprinkles. But while I didn't necessarily get the ROV in the water or anything like that on this particular trip, anytime I get to come here I consider it a win because regardless of what I plan to do here, um, I always find something new. And I think that's one of the magical properties of this place. You, you know, you come here with a plan and sometimes it works and sometimes it goes out the window. But uh, I still always find something beautiful here. And whether you accomplish your mission or not, in this place a mission is just a guideline. Um, you got to be flexible, you got to be open, and let this place guide you to what it is you find and what you see. So, the weather's just going to continue to get worse this particular day and in through the night, so I'm probably going to pack this one up and uh, head on back home. But, uh, it doesn't matter what I do here. I could be doing my video work or listen to that eagle right there. <laughs> I'm just blessed to be here. 
So until next time, this is Dana Price, Amber Productions. See you on the next one.